Hi, my name is Nilanjana Barden and I uh, work at Southern Illinois University in the Department of Speech Communication and one of my primary areas of research and teaching is intercultural communication and within intercultural communication I am specifically interested in issues related to post-colonialism and critical globalization and how those two intersect and also this means that I'm interested in issues such as diaspora, hybridity, transnationalism, translocalism and issues that are similar or related to these concepts. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, I am looking at a sheet of paper here because uh, I know how short the YouTube attention span is and I want to stay on topic here and stay focused. But uh, YouTube jokes aside, uh, when Benny asked me to uh, speak to this topic of intersectionality, um, he did ask me to specifically think about how we do intersectionality in our everyday lives. And um, I think that's an important point that he made because uh, a lot of times with a lot of theories, we tend to understand them in an intellectual way, but when it comes to actually engaging with those theories in our everyday lives, in praxis, we get a little stumped. So I will talk mainly about how I have engaged in intersectionality uh, in my life. At, and I'll give you a couple of episodes or, or stories, I guess. But before I do that, I would like to point out that there, I see two key benefits to intersectionality theory. And the first one is what it helps us do in terms of critique. It really helps us uh, understand important social justice issues from um, more complex perspectives. And they help us understand, for instance, to go back to Kimberly Crenshaw's important 1991 Mapping the Margins article, it helps us understand, for instance, that we cannot really understand gender violence in the US context without understanding how issues of race, uh, gender, and, um, and class intersect. Uh, for example, a Amy Carrillo has done a lot of good work in this area, uh, which and where she examines how uh, she how she has tried to build translate racial alliances with colleagues in her department and in her in her work, and how intersectionality can help us understand issues of of. of uh, coalition building and alliance building better. And of course, there's Karma Chavez's work, uh, the article that we're responding to this week, that uh, beautifully helps us understand the labor issue in Wisconsin last year from an intersectional pers uh, perspective and helps us understand how we cannot look at intersectionality just in, in singular, singular dimensions, that we have to understand how gender, race, and class came into play um, in complex intersecting ways in relation to the labor issues. So I think intersectionality has these two main benefits. Uh, one, the way it helps us do critique, and two, how uh, also, oh well, I didn't get to two. Two is actually about how it can help us think about coalition building across uh, difference lines, across lines of difference, and across lines of power. And this, to me, is a very hopeful approach, which keeps critique in mind, but at the same time has an eye on how can we reach across cultural borders in ways that can help us bring people from different identity groups together for a cause that everybody believes is. No, this is not easy by any means, but intersectionality theory does help us think about that deeply. My first story. Now this goes back to 1992 when I first came to the United States uh, to study in graduate school. And what happened in my first year here in this country on campus is that I became a part of a group of I guess you could call them international students from many parts of the world, not just the global north or the global south, but many parts of the world. And these folks were coming together for a particular reason, and this was an emotional reason. And intersectionality, I think, can help people come across for political reasons, cultural reasons, for emotional reasons. And we came together for the emotional and cultural reason, which was cultural displacement. All of us, despite all the differences that you know, we uh, represented in terms of uh, ethnicity, race, gender, uh, sexual orientation, religion, and nationality. And of course, you have to remember that all these other categories of identity play out very different in different national contexts. But we were coming across through all these differences because we all were experiencing cultural dislocation. And the other thing about this, this 
this group of friends that we had was that they were not just international students who belonged to that group. There were people who were also U.S. American students who were part of that group, and these folks were the folks who felt that or organically joined the group or became part of the friends group because they felt the need to live their lives uh, through a perspective that was beyond a U.S.-centric perspective. So everybody in that group really was there to fulfill an emotional need um, through, and they were engaging in inter intersectionality to do that. Of course, at that time, I hadn't encountered the term, the theoretical term intersectionality. It is only now that I look back and I say, yes, that was, we were doing intersectionality then. The second uh, story, and this is after I had uh, heard of the term intersectionality and had an academic sense of it. Uh, this goes back to 2001, 2002, after 9-11, when the U.S. was um, engaged in the debate of uh, whether or not we should go to war with Iraq. And this was a time, a very intense time for us on campus and in the community when a lot of folks came together from across different units on campus and from various uh, corners of the community who came together, uh, people who believed that we should not go to war, that it was the wrong step, the wrong move. And we came together across our differences, and this is again not to minimize differences, differences are important. Uh, and they lent to different views on this topic, and they lent to different views on this topic on Iraq, the war, uh, and all the other issues surrounding it. But at the same time, we strongly believed, we had the conviction that this was the wrong move, to go to war was the wrong move. And we engaged in all kinds of discussions and platforms. We staged protests in the town center. We talked to each other. We, we learned about each other's differences. We engaged in teach-ins and this to me was another example of engaging in an intersectionality uh, in an everyday way, although in a very intense uh, way that involved a very specific political situation and uh, a transnational situation. So these are the two examples that I would like to leave you with today, but I would like to say that um, Regarding Benny's question about how we can do intersectionality better in our lives, I think if we can uh, use intersectionality theory to understand that it helps us take a different view of, um, of, of concepts such as agency, difference, belonging, and identity, then we can really uh, move towards a path where moving across cultural borders takes on um, a different uh, meaning for us. For example, I think intersectionality teaches us to think of agency in less individualistic ways and more collective ways. And, you know, normally it's a matter of you either have agency or you don't, but I think intersectionality says agency can be something that can be produced collective collectively. Second, I think it helps us think of difference in less binary and oppositional ways. And without downplaying differences, I think intersectionality helps us understand that differences can be overlapping and they can be related and they do not have to be uh, very separate oppositional uh, things uh, or beliefs. Regarding belonging, I think Amy Carrero gives us this wonderful idea of differential belonging, which she borrows from Sandoval, and she talks about not thinking of belonging as belonging uh, to some pre-given identity category, but thinking about belonging in terms of leaning towards the other. And this, to me, is is very profound um, way of thinking about belonging. It's a very hopeful way of thinking about belonging. Uh, it says belonging is about connecting with others. It's an outward move rather than an inward, I just belong to this one group uh, approach to belonging. And when it comes to identity, of course, Thinking about agency, difference, and belonging in these ways helps us decenter our identities in ways that can help us connect across difference in, in, in a more hopeful, well, critical way. So if we can mi be mindful of these ways of crossing cultural borders for emotional and social justice reasons, then I think we can really uh, find more opportunities and we will be able to see more opportunities in our lives to do intersectionality in an everyday way and perhaps be able to break through some of the identity boxes that we may, we may feel trapped by and move beyond them and connect with others in a more meaningful way. So that's where I'd like to leave that, this at today. And Benny, thanks again for the opportunity for uh, being on Critical Praxis. And uh, thank you.